Hello and welcome back to my channel for another Sun Moon combination. If you're new, my name is Lorray, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about Aries Sun with Leo Moon. I'm going to start off the video by talking about what a typical Aries Sun is like, and then I'm going to get into the moon placement and then talk about how the moon and sun probably interact and how it affects certain things. So if there's certain things about the sun description that don't quite make sense or don't quite resonate, then hang around till I talk about the moon placement and the combination, and then it will probably tie together ni quite nicely and make a lot of sense. So Aries suns are very passionate, aggressive, competitive, goal-driven, loyal, energetic, and self-confident, and fiercely independent. I know a lot of adults that like to kind of romanticize being a kid, like, oh, to be a kid again, you know, no responsibilities, don't have to pay bills, oh, wouldn't that be nice? And I am like, hell no, nah. hell no. Like, I don't know about others, this is my personal experience, but as a kid, like, I did, I did, don't miss being a kid at all. I much prefer being an adult, even if it means I have more responsibilities and, bill, and bills. I much prefer having my own independence. So, like I mentioned, Aries love their independence, and they, because of this, they hate being told what to do, uh, and I think most Aries don't enjoy having a boss, or at the very least, they don't enjoy not having any kind of autonomy or leadership position at work. So if you're in Aries or you know someone that's in Aries, they're probably far happier either starting their own business or being in some kind of leadership position at work, whether that's a supervisor, a manager, or the CEO, or at the very least having a job where they have some form of autonomy with their work. Aries suns are also quite impulsive and they kind of tend to not think through decisions a lot they they're more spontaneous you know they want to just when they get an idea and they're excited about it they just want to do adventures and they want to do stuff it's they're they're more about action and so they don't really think through all of the possibilities and do a lot of planning so and they're also not risk averse so aries yeah they they don't really plan stuff or think things through a lot before jumping in head first now, nothing lights Aries up more than the pursuit of a goal that they're really passionate about. Like I mentioned, they're very goal-driven, and Aries are really good at starting projects, but they're not so good at finishing them. Aries has shiny object syndrome because they're so passionate and they're so excited about the start of something new. Uh, then once they get to like the work and the in-between and the passion wears off and then they'll usually abandon it for abandon it for some newer more exciting goal that they're passionate about so aries are very good at starting they're not very good at finishing and aries have very like fluctuating energy it's because it's so much energy and so much passion like at the beginning that it's not sustainable to continue that level of energy or passion and as a result they usually fizzle out or even burn out and so aries are not known for their slow methodical perseverant pace with things that's definitely more of an earth sign thing you know they say that life is a marathon but for aries it's a series of sprints so i find actually aries can sometimes have a hard time like with being tired or burnt out all of the time because many of us don't know how to like save energy for later and don't know how to like slow down before we get to the point where we burn out. Aries hate being controlled and spite is definitely a powerful motivator for them. Now Aries tell it like it is. Aries don't really beat around the bush. They, they cannot handle any backhanded passive aggressive or fakeness from people. That's the kind of thing that really makes Aries blood boil and sometimes they can be considered to be an asshole because Aries are just very very blunt and they're very to the point and they just don't understand like why you have to be like manipulative or like beat around the bush or all those backhanded things like like if you have something bad to say say it to my face be very like be upfront about it now aries are very impatient like i mentioned and this is also the case when it comes to things like their temper i find aries 
the Aries are probably the quickest to anger of all of the 12 signs, but they also get over it really quickly. So like I mentioned, it's so much energy and passion at the beginning, and then it fizzles out like a lot quicker than some of the other signs. Now Aries are aggressive, like I said at the beginning, and this is true. This is not, not always a bad thing. What I mean is that Aries are very aggressive about everything. They love aggressively. They get angry aggressively. They approach projects and ideas aggressively. They're just, they get excited and they're very aggressive about how they express their passion. Now, Aries will stick up for and defend their loved ones no matter what. Like I mentioned, they're really loyal and very passionate. And I find usually if an Aries is getting angry, a lot of the time it could be because they're defending uh, someone that they care about. Aries also really want to see their loved ones succeed. Aries are just passionate about so many things and they're passionate about doing what they want to do and living their life how they please because they're the first sign of the zodiac so they are a more selfish sign and this isn't always a bad thing but they are the more selfish sign in that they put themselves first and so that can be a good thing it can also be a bad thing depending on how healthy this person is and how evolved or unevolved they are now because they if they're healthy i find because they put themselves first they're much more inclined to then be able to do that for other people they bring that passion and that vitality to the people they care about and as a result i find aries can be some of like the best cheerleaders because they want to see the people around them be as passionate and excited about life and wants to push people to be the best they can be Aries also, I think, are known for aggressive pep talks. They, <laughs> my partner has been the subject of many of those. And it's because we care and we also love giving advice. Now, Aries aren't the best at dealing with other people's emotions. Now, this does depend on the moon placement as well as other factors, but for the most part, Aries in and of itself, we are not the best at dealing with people's emotions. And that's not to say that we don't care, quite the contrary, actually, but Aries, like when, when someone we care about comes to us to talk about a problem in their life or something that's making them upset, our knee-jerk reaction is to fix it. Like, what can I do to fix it? We'll give advice because we think like, it's how we think that if something is making you upset or something is a problem, it needs to be fixed so it won't make you feel this way anymore. And it's kind of a learning curve for Aries. It definitely was for myself that sometimes when people come to you with a problem and they're talking to you about something, sometimes they just want to talk. They don't need you to fix it. They don't want your advice, even if we think they need it. Sometimes they just want to talk. And so that can be a, a challenging part for Aries because that's just not how we're wired. We're wired on like, let's let's fix this. I'll, I'll go beat up this person, you know, like give you an aggressive pep talk. I'll give you lots of advice that you don't want. <laughs> let's make it better. So even if they're not best at dealing with the emotions or, or listening and just being there to console you, Aries do care. Um, but Aries do not have a tolerance for people that just sit around and wallow and feel sorry for themselves and for a long period of time and just don't try. And they have no patience or sympathy for people who ask for advice, go against that advice, and then come back and complain about the consequences and feeling sorry for themselves. Because when we love someone, when we care about someone, us Aries, we love pushing people to be the best that they can be and when it feels like the people we care about aren't trying or they're not doing their best or they're making decisions or doing things that are against their own best interests or they ask for advice and don't follow it, we're very honest about how we feel about it. And that's not everyone's cup of tea because Aries like I mentioned, they're not the ones that want to just sit and talk about your feelings. We're more like doers, action takers, and fixers. Oh, let's, you know, either do something to fix it or let's do something to not think about it and shove it down. <laughs> Basically, the Aries are, are quite to the point. They don't beat around the bush, even with, especially with the people they care about. So even if maybe sometimes your, heal, your um, feelings get hurt, at least Aries are very honest about where you stand with them and how they feel about you. <laughs> And it's because they want the same in return. Most Aries, like I mentioned, that are, are healthy and, you know, um, I'm going to get to the unevolved aspects of Aries because I'm very aware that they exist. But when Aries are healthy and fairly evolved, 
they're very straight and to the point about where you stand with them and how they feel about you because we want the same in return. It's because Aries don't like the fake or the passive aggressive stuff that goes like talking behind each other's back and then acting like everything's fine to your face and then finding out about it like gossip and things like that. Aries don't like being on the receiving end of that and so they're very forthcoming with being like, hey, I'm going to talk to you directly. They're they're not super conflict averse. That's, that's a big thing with Aries is they, they don't really shy away from conflict, especially with loved ones because they're just let's get it out in the open, let's talk about it. Like, Aries are very to the point. And so they appreciate when other people are very to the point with them. So now, um, some of the downsides of Aries. So like you've probably picked up now, Aries are very passionate, energetic individuals. And now we get to kind of the problems that can arise from Aries. And that is, if that passionate energy does not have a proper outlet, ideally either something physical or competitive, Aries are very competitive. So if it does not have some kind of healthy outlet, it builds up and that's what leads to the Aries stereotypes of being an asshole or hot-headed or very short-tempered where they fly off the handle and just because they're unable to control all of this energy and these feelings that and this passion that has like bottled up that they don't have an outlet for. And so I find it's not uncommon for Aries to need some form of anger management. Now, for the most part, though, Aries are very passionate individuals who are fiercely independent, and when they care about someone, they have a very, a very direct way of showing it, and they like to push people to be the best they can be, and sometimes it doesn't come across how we mean it to. <laughs> I'm recording this on a different day because I had my birthday on the 18th and and if you notice I got a new chair So quickly before I get to the moon placement I wanted to let you know about the new Facebook group that I am starting called the astrology club It's gonna be really awesome. I'm going to be putting free training in there quite often I also really want to be making transit videos and they're using people's actual birth charts inside the Facebook group There's also a 2021 astrology calendar that you can download for free Basically detailing all major astrology transits for the rest of the year going from May until the end of December. So if you would like to join the Facebook group, the link in the description. I would really love if you joined talking all about astrology. Let's get back to the moon placement. So now we get to Leo Moon. Leo Moons are very energetic, charismatic, passionate, and they love to be the center of attention. Leo Moons are quick learners when it's something they're passionate about. Leo Moons are, that that's kind of a trait they have in common with most fire signs. Most fire signs don't really want to devote their time or learn something if they're not interested in it, if they're not excited or passionate about it. They're fire signs. What's the point if, they, if they're not passionate about it? What's the point of doing it? They're doers when they're passionate about it. Leo moons are also very social, they have a good sense of humor, and they're motivated by status and like popularity. They kind of, like I mentioned, they want to be the center of attention and so they they want to be the center of attention. So they, they like, they're motivated by, by goals and aspirations that would result in some kind of status, symbol, luxury, or popularity. So this would be someone that maybe is drawn to things like acting or just being a public figure of some kind where they have fans and popularity, people liking watching them and admiring them and paying attention to them. Now the weaknesses of Leo Moons is they do have a tendency to slip into vanity, self-centeredness, and bossiness if they're not careful, even a bit of narcissism. Now because this is two fire signs that could be a possibility, but it really depends on the person. The way to a Leo moon's heart is definitely through compliments. Leo placements in general, especially suns and moons, really thrive off of compliments and admiration and affirmations from the people around them and the people that they care about. And so Leo moons are the best when they have a very assured sense of identity and the assured sense of, I guess, approval from the people around them. And so if that's not happening, if they're not getting compliments from the people around them or they're just not getting any kind of positive reinforcement from the people around them, or if they have no internal source of confidence outside of the people around them, then they can become really insecure and that's usually when they'll overcompensate and become narcissistic. So the best way to avoid that is if they're able to have like a good support system around them, but not solely rely on the praise of other people and actually have some self-confidence that comes from an internal source and doesn't solely rely on the words of other people, which I think 
really helps having the Aries sun because Aries tends to be less concerned about what other people think about them and more concerned about doing what they want to do. And so that could really help with this pair and kind of balance out that kind of the Leo tendency to need compliments and praise from other people around them but it definitely helps. For the most part though, Leo moons tend to kind of wear their heart on their sleeve, much like Aries, and they're the kind of people that they may seem kind of overbearing or they may seem like just overly exuberant and maybe even self-centered, but some can be arrogant and I'm not saying that like that's not a possibility, but I do, but for the most part, I like focusing on a lot of the positives and so sometimes I do find that air sign or uh, fire signs can come across like over the top and then when you get to know them, you see that they just ha they actually have huge hearts where they will defend and you know their loved ones and are very generous with their loved ones if they're healthy and they're evolved. So basically this is a combination where this person is just very vivacious, very passionate and exuberant and just love to have fun, like being the center of attention, really ballsy, you know, they kind of absolute trailblazer where they take life by storm. This may be someone that has a harder time like finishing projects or sticking with anything for too long but i do want to preface that fire signs fire signs aren't doomed to never finish a project w really it, it comes down to it have having to be a project that they need to get done where they really really want it to get done like it has to be something that promises some sort of result that is like central to them as a person like they need that as a person not just oh this would be nice to have or oh that's kind of cool oh this is kind of cool the way that you get a, a fire sign to finish something that they started is if it is something that they need like in their heart like it like it has to be this this deep rooted need maybe even like it, their identity rests on accomplishing this thing and so but for the most part just in general they have maybe a convoluted way of getting there because they get distracted so easily like i mentioned fire signs are doers because of something they're passionate about it's essentially emotion fueled action and so that's a lot of the time why they have a hard time finishing projects is because that passion is fleeting eventually passion dies down and so in order to have that perseverance it has to involve more than just passion it has to rest on some more important thing that even when the passion fades they keep going because it's more important than just the passionate feelings that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel. I'm almost able to get my channel monetized, and so I would really appreciate the subscribes as well as the watch time. So if there is content that you would like me to make, please comment below and let me know, and I will do my best to make it. And if you want to join the Astrology Club, a link will be in the description. I hope to see you there. That's all for now. Take care.